Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about 6011, which is one of the most versatile stick welding electrodes to use when you're welding in your garage or doing odd job type repairs. It's really versatile. Not too long ago, I uploaded a video about my favorite electrode, which is actually a 7018. I'll link that video in the description, but I got a lot of comments back saying, you know, if I could only have one rod, it'd be a 6011, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. We're gonna look at a lot of those as we get going. Now, first of all, let's talk about what a 6011 rod is. Now, 6011 means something, those numbers, if you're not familiar. The 60 stands for 60,000 pounds per square inch. That's the strength of the weld metal. The one, the first one anyway, stands for all position electrode, meaning you can weld vertical, overhead, or flat and horizontal, pretty much any position with it. And the last one indicates the type of flux you have, or kind of tells you the nature of the electrode and how it runs. So it's really the important one. Now 6011 has a close cousin 6010 that's often used in industry. Both these electrodes have an arc that penetrates deep and a puddle that freezes quickly. But there are two main differences. First of all, it's subtle, but the 6010s, in my experience, actually do penetrate and cut a little bit deeper. Here, let's take a look as I run this 6010. Now on the same machine, same settings, I'm gonna run a 6011. And it's subtle, but you can see it's not penetrating or cutting nearly as deep. Just doesn't feel like quite as hot an arc with the 6011. The other main difference is what really makes it great for the guy in his garage, or if you're not sure what situation you're gonna be working in, and that is that it can be run on pretty much any type of machine. There's two machines we're gonna be running here today. This one is a Lincoln AC225. It's a tombstone buzz box. There are so many of these machines around all over the place. This one I actually got used off the classified ads for about 150 bucks. And since it outputs alternating current or AC, it won't run a 6010, the arc isn't stable enough, but it will run a 6011 really well. The other machine that we're gonna be using is this Deco Pro. And it's a machine I picked up off Amazon for around $100 a couple years ago. And while it works really well for the price, there are some limitations when compared with my higher end machines. And one of those is that it won't run a 6010 electrode, but it can run a 6011 pretty well. So I'm gonna start out by running here on this Deco Pro. And I've set the machine to 95 amps, but I know it actually outputs a little bit less than it says it does just from past experience. This is a 1 8th of an inch, a 3.2 millimeter electrode on 1 8th of an inch or 3.2 millimeter thick plate. Now this electrode can handle some more amperage, but on this plate, this is a pretty good setting. Now when you run these electrodes, it really helps to use some torch manipulation and that can help to control the puddle. There are two different ways that I'm aware of to do this. The first here I'm running is called a whip and pause. And what that is, is I'll move forward right to the very front edge of the puddle without getting out of it, and then move back about half the distance that I'd moved forward. And I repeat this all the way across. The other option is to make small circles as you move along, and it has a similar effect. And this just gives an opportunity for the weld metal to cool a little bit, that puddle to freeze, and you move forward. So that works really well. Now let's go ahead and move over to this other machine, this Lincoln AC225. I've set it to 90 amps and love that sound when you turn these things on, get this buzz box going. And I'll go ahead and run along here. I'm doing a similar thing using the whip and pause. That's really my go-to technique, working my way all the way along this plate trying to do it as evenly as I can, but it's difficult to be perfectly consistent with this rod. I mean, that's one of the things about it is you're not gonna get that same smooth bead appearance you would get with some other electrodes. After I'm done running this, let's take a look at it. Now the slag doesn't come off in big chunks like it would with some other types of electrodes. It's a little bit more of a crust that you can scrape off a little with your chipping hammer, and most of the work can be done with a wire brush, but I usually end up finishing with a grinder and a wired bristled wheel. If we take a look at it, you can see it's a little bit rougher in appearance than you get with some other electrodes, but definitely is strong. And you know, the one thing about these electrodes is they penetrate in deep. Now let's talk about a few other advantages of this type of rod. 
One is that uh, while it's a best practice to always have clean, bright, shiny metal to weld on, it's not always practical to get everything totally clean. And this rod, since it penetrates in so deep, can actually tolerate a little bit of rust and a little paint or dirt better than other rods can. Another thing that it's really good for is tack welding because you can get a really small tack put on your material and then keep things smooth and that light slag on a tack is actually pretty easy to clean off. So I do like it for tack welding quite a bit. One other way that you can use these rods is by welding vertically down. Now not every electrode will work to weld vertical down, but this does work quite well with the 6011 or also with the 6010. And the main thing about this is it's a best practice to do this on, you know, material around three millimeters, an eighth of an inch thick or thinner. There are two main advantages to this vertical down arrangement. The first one is you can run it with a nice hot setting and travel pretty quickly. So so you finish your job faster, but also by doing that, you reduce the amount of heat that you put into your material and you avoid burning holes through it uh, as you work your way down with the weld pool. So there you go, that's a 6011. Definitely worth getting you some, keep a few around to use uh, here and there, get used to them, because I guarantee they're gonna come in handy. I've run a lot of these rods. Well, if you learned something here, enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.